Welcome to my channel, The Binge Eating Therapist. I'm Sarah, former binge eater turned psychotherapist, and my mission is to use this space to bring you content to help you understand your struggle with food and break free from binge eating. And today's video is a little bit different because I had this idea of doing some book reviews. And so I think I'm going to call this the Pearls of Wisdom book club or book series, something like that. I'm going to bring books to you that I think have some real pearls of wisdom when it comes to overcoming binge eating. And today's book is one of my absolute favourites and it's Janine Roth's Women, Food and God. And so, if you're sitting comfortably, let's begin. This book had a really big impact on me in my own recovery and still influences the way I think about food and binge eating now. And the woman who wrote it, Janine Roth, she's quite a big name in the emotional eating, body image, disordered relationship with food world. She's been on Oprah and she's written quite a few books. But this one is my absolute favourite. And it's written almost in a poetic style. The writing is absolutely beautiful and some of the analogies she uses kind of really bring some of these ideas to life. So hopefully I can convey that in this review. So... I suppose I want to talk about the title first, Women, Food and God. So I think to begin with, I'm guessing she's called it, used the word woman, because she works with women, she runs retreats. As far as I'm aware, she exclusively works with women. But I would say from reading this book, this book is about like life and what it means to be a person. So I think that if you're a man, I, I think don't write this book off or be put off by the fact that it's got the word women in the title because I think there's a lot in here for everyone who has a really difficult relationship with food. Um, and then God, that's the other word I think that throws people a lot in this title. So I thought it was really important to talk about at the beginning of this, what she means when she uses the word God. So um, I'm gonna pick out a couple of bits to just try and help you understand what she's saying because she's not talking about God in the way that you might immediately assume when you saw a title like that. It's not a religious book. So she says, it doesn't matter whether we believe in one God, many gods or no God. Anyone who breathes and thinks and experiences has beliefs about God. Hmm. Then she says, to discover what you really believe, pay attention to the way you act and to what you do when things don't go the way you think they should. Pay attention to what you value. Pay attention to how and what you spend your money on and pay attention to the way you eat. You will quickly discover if you believe the world is a hostile place and you need to be in control of the immediate universe for things to go smoothly. You will discover if you believe there is not enough to go round and that taking more than you need is necessary for survival. You will find out if you believe that being quiet is unbearable and that being alone means being lonely. If feeling your feelings means being destroyed if being vulnerable is for sissies, or if opening to love is a big mistake, and you will discover how you use food to express each one of these core beliefs. I think that's so interesting. The bit that really jumps out for me here is if feeling your feelings means being destroyed. When I talk to, there's a whole idea that the only way to get rid of your feelings is to feel them. And when I talk about this kind of thing with clients, um, People really do think that feeling their feelings is incredibly scary. We've got to this place where we believe that it's going to be unbearable to sit with whatever it is that we're feeling. And I think part of the belief that it's going to be so unbearable is then part of what makes it unbearable. But So on God, a bit further, just to help you understand what she's talking about when she talks about God. I don't believe in the God that most people call God, but I do know that the only definition of God that makes any sense is one that uses this human life and its suffering, the very things we believe we need to hide or fix, as a path to the heart of love itself, which is why the relationship with food is a perfect doorway. When I realise that some people find the word God explosive and potentially divisive, and that others have a deeply satisfying relationship with God, I use the word in this book because... It evokes a vast expanse that we cannot penetrate with our minds, although we can know it through silence or poetry or simply sensing what is always here. So I think of it a little bit as being beyond um, 
what's speakable that we have beyond what we have a language for. And so then when she goes on to talk about, you know, how do you overcome your difficulties with food? Um, this is where she suggests we start. She says, you will stop turning to food when you understand in your body, not just your mind, that there is something better than turning to food. And this time, when you lose weight, you will keep it off. Truth, not force, does the work of ending compulsive eating. Awareness, not deprivation, informs what you eat. Presence, not shame, changes how you see yourself and what you rely on. When you stop struggling, stop suffering, stop pushing and pulling yourself around food and your body, and when you stop manipulating and controlling, when you actually relax and listen to the truth of what is there, something bigger than your fear will catch you. With repeated experiences of opening and ease, you learn to trust something infinitely more powerful than a set of rules that someone else made up. So this is how she's um, approaching it. It's hugely about presence. It's hugely about, I suppose, something bigger than just what we think and see and touch every day. And she, off she says that the first place to start is to understand who we take ourselves to be. I think it's a really interesting expression because we think, we think we know who we are. Um, but often we've got this idea of ourselves in our mind that's based on the past and based on us predicting what's going to happen in the future. And this is why the presence and the awareness and coming to the moment, her philosophy is that you only get to know who you are by being present with who you are and what's going on for you in the moment. Um, I'll pop back to that, but I want to quickly just share with you what she says about dieting um, because she's very anti-dieting and a lot of what she says really fits in with like the philosophy of intuitive eating and um, she talks about dieting or trying to change your body in some way as like the story of Sisyphus, which if you don't know, um, it's an old legend about this guy Sisyphus who pushes a rock up a mountain and he just wants to get to the top with his rock. And when he gets to the top of the mountain, he sees there's another mountain. So immediately starts pushing his rock up the next mountain. And then when he gets to the top of that mountain, there's another mountain and so on. So it kind of, it's, it ties in with this idea of some of us that are constantly striving and trying to, I don't know, push ourselves and, and believe that when we get to this point, then we'll feel okay, then we'll feel good about ourselves. And the idea that often a lot of the time when we get there, that just, <laughs> there's the next mountain and we think, oh, when I get that, then I'll feel good enough about myself. Um, and so I'll, I'll read what she says about this. When she's talking about uh, diet mentality or trying to change your body, she says, you always have something to do. As long as you are striving and pushing and trying hard to do something that can never be done, you know who you are someone with a weight problem who's working hard to be thin. You don't have to feel lost or helpless because you always have a goal, but that goal can never be reached. Um, and I often you know, ask my clients because they're thinking about food and so much energy is going into worrying about food, stressing about food, feeling good about food sometimes, but a lot of the mental space is taken up with stressing about food, which I think is the case for most people that binge eat. And so I say to them, well, if you weren't thinking about food, what would you be thinking about? And it's really hard to know when your thoughts have been so focused on the food. It's like, who are you? Who will you be? Who will you be without it? Um, so she talks about the false promises of diets. She says the promise of a diet is not only that you will have a different body, but it is that in having a different body, you will have a different life. If you hate yourself enough, you will love yourself. If you talk to yourself enough, you will become a peaceful, relaxed human being. That, that just ties into the whole philosophy, you can't hate yourself then. And so many people, they're trying to lose weight, they're trying to deal with the binge eating by, from the energy place of really disliking yourself. And it just doesn't work as a way to motivate yourself to feel better, which is what most people think will happen if they can stop binging. So then this bit, which I think sounds very intuitive eating like, she says, if you actually listen to what your body, not your mind, wants, 
you'll discover it doesn't want three weeks of hot fudge, hot fudge sundaes, despite the panting and salivating that is evoked at their very mention. In addition to your body's needs for food, other than cream and fudge, there is also the fact that the moment you tell yourself you can have it, the moment the taboo is removed, hot fudge sundaes become as ordinary as sardines. So this really ties into the intuitive eating principle of giving yourself permission to eat. But what I like about Janine's book is that she really stresses the presence and awareness with that because it only works really if you are able to bring presence to whatever it may be. So coming back to when she talks about who you take yourself to be and she's sort of saying that um, trying to figure out who you are, you're going to notice some beliefs coming up. So if you were to sit with yourself um, in some uncomfortable feelings, you're, I'm just going to notice, you may notice that some beliefs or thoughts come up that you haven't really looked at before. And these need to be examined and inquired about. That she says and she warns. When you first start beginning to question your core beliefs, you don't try to fix or change or improve them. That's the really difficult thing, I think, because as soon as someone realises they've got a belief or they're doing something that's not serving them, first thing they want to do is fix it. But she's kind of saying to stay with it and understand. She says, you take a breath and then you take another. You notice sensations in your body. If there is a tingling or a pulsing or a warmth or a coolness, you notice what you feel. And if you've always called this feeling sadness, you are curious about it as if there is no word associated with it, no label describing it. It is as if it is the first time you have ever encountered it. Is it a lump of blue burned ashes in your chest? Does it feel like a hole in your heart? When you notice it, does it open or change? This kind of questioning provides a bridge between who you take yourself to be and who you actually are between what you tell yourself based on stories from your past and what you sense based on your direct experience now, it allows you to distinguish between outdated familiar patterns and the current living truth. I think that's so important. She calls that inquiry, um, that idea of sitting with what is and really noticing what's happening in the body and, and um, yeah, just bringing your attention right into it. And she says that all any feeling wants is to be welcomed with tenderness. It wants room to unfold. It wants to relax and tell its story. It wants to dissolve like a thousand writhing snakes that with a flick of kindness become harmless strands of rope. Oh, it's beautiful. The way she writes this book is just absolutely beautiful. Um, this idea of welcoming our feelings and allowing them to unfold and that being what well, it's the path to freedom because it reduces the urge to bolt or to run away or to escape, which is so prevalent um, when it comes to binging or using, using food in that way. So I think I just want to end with probably my favourite bit of the book. This is just my favourite quote because I feel like it sums up the whole ethos of the book. Um, so I will leave you with this. And if you're interested in, in reading the book, I'll chuck a link below to, to the book on Amazon. Um, but you may have got enough out of it from this video. Hopefully, hopefully there's something you can take away. So this is my favorite part. Compulsive eating is a way we distance ourselves from the way things are when they are not how we want them to be. I tell them that ending the obsession with food is all about the capacity to stay in the present moment, to not leave themselves. I tell them that they don't have to make a choice between losing weight and doing this. Weight loss is the easy part. Any time you truly listen to your hunger and fullness, you fall, you, I'll start that again. Weight loss is the easy part. Any time you truly listen to your hunger and fullness, you lose weight. I would just wanna add a caveat in there that it's if your body is at a higher weight than it wants to be. But I also tell them that compulsive eating is basically a refusal to be fully alive. No matter what we weigh, those of us who are compulsive eaters have anorexia of the soul. We refuse to take in what sustains us. We live lives of deprivation. And when we can't stand it any longer, 
we binge. The way we're able to accomplish all of this is by the simple act of bolting, of leaving ourselves hundreds of times a day. So, if you've read this book, I'd love to hear what you think. And if you do read it and want to let me know what you think, um, please get in touch. And if you, if there are any books that you would like me to cover, um, I will definitely consider that. I've got a few lined up that I think are particularly good, but I'm always looking out for new resources and other ways of thinking about this stuff. So thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely week and I'll see you in the next video.